Uh, welcome to Staff Chat. Um, this is, I don't know how many episodes we've done thus far. This is the second in-person episode. Um, Cameron is not here right now, so Alex is here. Hey. Yay. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but so we have uh, some questions in the bowl that we got some from some people. Um, we also have some other random ones, I think, as well. But so we're going to read a couple questions and answer some questions and hopefully have some funny conversation like last time. With questions. With questions. Are there are there <laughs> questions involved? There's lots of questions. In a bowl, yes. How many questions? questions? We don't know. 20, 23. Yeah, questions. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did you do the honors, our new Sure, our new yeah, guests? first. Yeah. yeah. First no, you can't pull. move the bowl. Oh, no, what are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> Put the bowl back. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, but you can grab the bowl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can't just grab a slip of paper out of the bowl? Let's <laughs> oh. I don't understand the question. Good. Well, Too bad, read, read it. <laughs> But I understand now I know who it's from. Why I don't understand the question. Uh, oh no! <laughs> what do I need to know about vultures? <laughs> who's, who's it from? You gotta say who's it by. Dan Fleischer. <laughs> All right. Yes. What do I need to know about vultures? I would say don't go near them because they have projectile vomit. Mm. That is that a true get statement? Your, yes, it is. They will vomit on their. It's acidic. How do you know and this? And it breaks up their yep. food. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, number one, they eat gross dead things that are on the road. So if you see a vulture around, you're probably about to die. What? See. As in, like, I, when you're getting close to death, you know? Like, if you're, like, if I'm going on a hike and I'm not doing too well health-wise, and you start seeing vultures flying around, it's probably not good. It. If you want to know everything you need to know about vultures, watch The Lion King. Uh, yeah, that's everything you need to know. But the, I was thinking like... Is my, it Jungle Book or... Jungle Book. Uh, Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Uh, Jungle Jungle Book. Book. Well, it's Jungle Book. Thank you I'm for going, correcting me. I'm going through my Disney roller. I, know. Like, I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. nope, I don't know. Nope. Start that again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking like my children are vultures. Like anytime I have good food, <laughs> oh my they're like coming around and they're like, I want that food. I uh, mean, yeah. And yeah. there are times where I share it with them and times that I don't. So, yeah. I, uh, vultures are really interesting, though, because, like, th just the fact that their whole their food source is dead things. Like, it's not like they <laughs> hunt. Like, it's like, oh, there's a dead rat on the road. Dinner. Yeah. And then, like, leftovers from what other animals yeah. hunt. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to go pick the meat off of that bone carcass that yeah. the lion left behind. You know, it's pretty crazy. I'm just. Why do you look so confused? I'm flabbergasted <laughs> by the amount of information you guys have on vultures. Flabbergasted. Write it down. Like, I. Why do you know that they have projectile vomit? I don't know where I picked that Random up. Why do you not yeah. know it? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like you're very uncultured. Public school education. I don't know. <laughs> and here's the thing. It didn't come from Mitch either. Mitch Oswald. That's true. Who's the sort of like a bird and, and you know, animal specialist. So, I don't know where I picked that up. No, I don't know either. Cause like, uh, so we got a bird feeder outside our house for Rosalind to watch, like mm -hmm. just cause birds are interesting. And when we first got it, there would be like birds out there and I would be like, Oh, that's a Robin or that's a pigeon or that's a finch. And Gabby's like, where do you know all these things? And I'm like, honestly, I have no idea. I'm like, why do I know these birds? Were you right though? Or were you yes, just making no, it Yes, no, I was oh, right. Okay. Like I knew what they were and I'm like, yeah. okay, where did I learn what these birds are? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I just make it up. Like my kids are like, "What type of bird is that?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's a dodo bird." It's a, it's a dodo. Yeah. 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 a red one. <laughs> if there's a chance, one that's it's flies. any other bird but a dodo bird. It's probably <laughs> the other bird. <laughs> okay, yeah, are so we what, still you, throwing things? Do you know anything about yeah. vultures, though? You're, we're not done. We're still talking about vultures. You can't throw it yet. Mm, birds. <laughs> Good job. It's, it's that's song that's by, a new quote. Yeah, <laughs> it's a song by John Mayer, birds. Alex Bowles. Birds. Yeah. They're um, birds. <laughs> I don't know. It's it interesting of things that you guys know about them. 
Oh, this is not gonna go Here well. We go. Yeah, go. This is the best part of the day. This is not gonna go well. It's not even gonna get to it. Watch you hit it the first try, Kobe. Oh, that was actually that was better than I expected. It went farther. Yeah, foot to the right. You would have been perfect. Yeah. All right, fine. Well, well, now you have to move the bowl. You have to pick up the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one lands in your teeth. All right. In your teeth? <laughs> yeah. <'cause he's> like <laughs> this is from Nate Brown, Uh-oh. and he says, What struggles do you think we will face post-COVID? What advantages within Cross Church and church in general? Don't, don't. I'm going to need you to repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> when we repeat questions here, we just make them up. Okay, yes. that's fine. Yeah. Oh, oh that was already. really low. Yeah, hit, the, hit the tripod, though. You were just trying to make bowls feel better. <laughs> sure. Oh, I can throw it short, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. She threw it longer than I did. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I, like first of all, I was having a conversation with uh, Ron Rodis in Walmart mm-hmm. the other day, um, just talking about how... Were you wearing your mask? I knew that was coming. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, oh. I was wearing a mask. Um, we were in the freezer aisle. Um <laughs> He was like going. I, I believe, were you I believe, buying I believe he was going the wrong <laughs> <Yes>. direction because <laughs> oh, no. oh, I tried no. to go the right direction, um, even though you know it's kind I of intentionally nobody, rebel against. Everyone directions. ignores it, anyways. <laughs> so, but uh, so we were we were talking about just everything and and talking about how like we feel like this is going to this has hopefully changed the world in in a way of slowing us down and realizing that we don't need as many things um, because we were so running so fast. You know, like now it's like, okay, well, do we really need to do 500 things in our week or can we, can we deal with 50, you know? Um, so I feel like as a church that might slow us down to where we're doing more things that are, um, like more purposeful, I guess. Yeah. More intentional than, than doing just like, Hey, let's, which we don't, we haven't done this in a long time, but uh, you know, like. I feel like a lot of churches, they just fill their week with events and it's like, okay, maybe that's not, let's do one good event a week instead of 50 or let's do three a month or one a month, you know, where it'll kind of like allow us to slow down and, and actually let's, let's make one good event, you know, just like you can't strategery. Yeah. Just like you can't do like, you know, it, you're better to do one hobby really well than try to do ten at a time and yeah. learn barely anything about those t- those hobbies. Mm-hmm. I think that 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 idea has been there for a while. Um, I don't know how long ago, but about five years ago, I read the book Simple Church uh, by Tom Rainer, and it kind of advocates that same idea: stop doing a million different things and just kind of do things a lot more simple because our schedules are so busy. Um, and at first, coming into COVID, that's kind of what I thought we were going to kind of go to in the church and just kind of your general life schedule. But as people are starting to put their schedules back together, I'm seeing a lot more people go back to how their schedule was in February and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, and unfortunately, I feel like we haven't learned anything. Uh, you know, people are like, oh, man, these last three months have sucked. Um, let me get busy again so that they the next three months don't suck. Um <clears throat> Maybe I'm pessimistic. Uh, no, but. I mean, yeah, that's it. I see yeah. it also. And um, I was thinking the other day, I was like, man, there's a lot of procrastination that I'm feeling and seeing like around now too, where it's like, oh, come on. We've had all this time and now let's not procrastinate. There should have been a lot of like gearing up and like ideas and stuff like within that, that time that we had like away and where we're distancing, but it's kind of like, okay, we're back at it. Regular, well, regular program. And I feel like for for us in particular, we tried to do so much during the stay-at-home mm-hmm. order uh, that there wasn't a lot of energy left at the end of the day or the end of the week to forward think of mm-hmm. what does this look like yeah, uh, come, <laughs> come the end of COVID. Yeah. And so as things started to unwind, I mean, then we were sitting back like, oh, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. we should have been talking about this for eight weeks. And we did have some of those conversations of, you know, what what's going to stay, what's going to go, uh, but nothing played out like we had talked about or how we right. expected. Um, uh, and even, even this week, you know, having our second week of, of live services and starting to get back into a routine, even this week, nothing has gone how we – thought it was going to go mm-hmm. uh, so it's it's kind of one of those things that we just figure out as we go and and uh 
pray for the best, I guess. Maybe that gives the illusion of procrastination. It's not, it's what you're, you're saying other than procrastination is just like, well, I don't know. Let's, you, you got to take it as it comes really. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that, uh, a struggle we're going to get from this is, is we're still going to be scared of closeness for a, like a long time. Um, which is hard for those people who, whose like love language is touch you know, or who's whatever, um, like having to people ask me if they can hug me, you know, it's like, ah, <laughs> but it's also like then having like an autoimmune disease, you know, like you, it's just mm-hmm. like that fear is still there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, when is that going to go away? Um, yeah. yeah, it's weird. Um, well, and yeah, I mean, even, you know, right now with our services, you know, we're still dealing with people that don't want to come to church. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, they're, are also probably going to be people that don't ever come back um, because they like the routine of being home on Sunday mornings or whatever. And maybe they, you know, maybe they watch live or maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think we're going to have to definitely fight that as well of like, hey, you know, yes, you can watch from home, but really you need to be engaging. Um, And, uh, you know, if they're involved in life groups during the week and things like that, that makes it a little different. But, you know, if you just engage from a stream on Sunday mornings, you're not really like being in the body yeah, it's and that's different. hard. Cause we've had both of our Sundays back with worship and everything, the engagement and everybody just has been great as far yeah. as like mm-hmm. just singing out. Loud. Like I can hear them through my in-ear monitors <laughs> through the, you know, actual room mics that are hanging down in there. And it's just like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. Everybody's ready to be back and, and praising God. And just, you know, it's been a wonderful experience thus far. Yeah. And I think what you said was the perfect plug for life groups. Uh, and we need we need to be involved in life groups and and the church needs to be involved in these these small group ministries uh, where you can be with people and be known by people and know people. Um, you know, if you're coming with 200, 300, 400 other people on a Sunday morning, you could come and yeah. l- literally talk to nobody and know <laughs> nobody um, and be known by nobody. Uh, so, you know, it's a good plug to be in life groups. And and that helps us even as a church to know the involvement of our people. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I if we looked at who was here the last two weeks, I, I couldn't tell you who was missing and who who was was here uh, even from week to week, because it's vastly different from one Sunday to the next. Yeah. Um, but in those small groups, we can we can keep up with our people and what's going on. Um, and I think that's important. Uh, so, so when they are disconnecting, when they're kind of pulling away and it might it just be the routine, you know, I like being at home on Sunday morning and watching on my TV and not having to get out of my pajamas. Uh, that's why I shop at Walmart and I watch worship on online. I don't have to get out of my pajamas, but uh, <clears throat> that if you're in a, a life group and you start to disconnect, it's much easier for you for you to say, "Hey, you know, this person's been in my life group. I haven't seen them in, in three weeks. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna follow up with them and and see what's going yeah. on." Yeah, it creates that relationship there. You know, yeah, it's. I mean, life groups are super important, obviously, for a church our size, um, and they get more important the larger we get. Um, which I mean means we also need more life groups. We need more people to step up and say, you know, I want to, um, I want to lead a life group. And I think people get scared of what that is. Um, and we kind of talked about this. I don't remember when that was. Um, we were doing like a life group thing. It yeah. feels like it was three years ago at this point, <laughs> right, but it wasn't. Right. Uh, but you know, like talking about how, like my life group for example um you know we're a bunch of young adults and a lot of weeks we don't like we might you know study like a right now media or whatever but there are other weeks where we're playing board games or we're going to see the newest marvel movie that comes out um because that's you know that's part of life groups you know it's it's not you don't have to get together and watch tim's sermon every week you don't have to get together and you know get deep into the word every week it's about living life together and so having those you know, weeks where you're just like, Hey, let's just hang out and get to know each other. You know, um, it makes, it it makes it a little less scary too. I feel like, and then those are the weeks where you can say somebody that's newer, just say, Hey, you know, we're not doing anything this week. We're just going to play some games. If you want to come over and kind of check out our group, you know? Um, so don't be afraid to, 
have a life group that's not you know centered on we're gonna dive into this book of the bible or whatever um but you can have those too you know maybe it's like i mean i know at one point there was a staunton one where it was like hey let's just watch this christian film together and talk about it like yeah yeah. Th- those are kind of things that we're totally okay with. And like that's that's the point of a life group is it's different for everyone, and not everyone's gonna like you know, like Richard Oswald has one about small um, small business owners in town, and that's that's great, um, and that affects a certain group of people, and so they get together, whatever whatever it is once a month or whatever, mm-hmm. and they meet early in the morning because that's when they have the time. And they just talk about what they're struggling with in the small business. And so, like, it literally can be anything pretty much. Yeah. Um, as and you know, we even had some online too where they were, they were, they would do like a daily email. Yeah. Like email like life group groups. Email or, email yeah. That was the first life group I was in was an email life yeah. group. Yeah. 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 And, and if that's what works, then, uh, you know, that's, I think people just get so scared of like the term life group and being a life group pastor. And it's like, it's not as, like, it's yeah. not as scary as it sounds. Well, and you also, the, the great thing about life groups is, and we have an example of this, like in this room is you get to speak into each other's lives and John being relatively new, like these two I've known for a longer time, we've kind of been like a group and they can speak into my life a lot easier. If you know, there's something that I'm struggling with, John's getting there, but with just the newness to the, to right. the group yeah. and things like that, that's, Speaking a, of that's that, a great I'm example. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, this is now an intervention of, uh, call you out. The, re- the, the reason we called you here today. Yes. Oh, Oh my gosh! Oh man! Did you wear that shirt on purpose? Uh, no. Yeah, I there he goes. There's, there's the plug there, right there. We, the plug, we have yeah. no idea what question. Yeah, we have like what? Actually, there, questions. there are only two questions in the bowl, yes. uh, but it's on twenty different slips of paper. So it's about vultures and life groups today. <laughs> so. Vultures and life groups. Yeah. Those are the two things that we're really trying to push right yeah. now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, we but, have a new vulture uh, ministry starting. Yeah. <laughs> a new vulture life group. Yeah. Life oh group for vulture God. enthusiasts, yeah. uh, which Eric and Adam will we be a part get of. get leftovers from restaurants in town. and to market that. <laughs> Do you love leftovers and roadkill? Well, then this life group is for you. Do you like hitting Vito. deers? <laughs> oh, no. All right. Tim Rodas is yeah. leading a life group about vultures. Uh. <laughs> he, he is keeping the food chain of vultures yeah. alive. By the God. deer that he kills with his truck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he ran into three, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever hit a deer in my whole driving career. <laughs> uh, correction, they ran <laughs> into knock. him. Yes. yes. It, de- yeah. it depends who you ask. If you ask the deer, he hit them. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't. <laughs> yeah, he killed them. Right <laughs> All the witnesses have been exterminated. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna get attacked by PETA. <laughs> Did you throw your? Th- yeah, you threw yeah, your thing. All right, we're moving on from this right, conversation. I really so, hope it's uh, get in life groups, uh, and we'll have a group connect in the fall if you're not in one. Um, yeah. But yeah, <clears throat> those are fun. Uh, this question is also from Nate Brown. It says, "How have you connected with the text of Habakkuk personally?" That's interesting because I actually because Nate on Instagram he's been posting uh, pictures of each mm-hmm. chapter and to one of them I said well that's interesting that you're doing that because I went directly from the uh, text of Habakkuk to Ecclesiastes which was kind of is a bit refreshing where you go from the tone of why God why and you know the the call and answer thing and like questioning and to one where it's like everything is meaningless but God mm. like type thing and I was like. I don't know why, but I just hopped over to there, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Wow, this is this is kind of nice to go from that to that." And I don't know, a little bit of hopscotching in the Bible, but you know, um, but that text of Habakkuk, and I know um, Dan Fleischer, I think, was a big fan of that, uh, yeah, of Habakkuk as well, where it just teaches you. There's all this, you know, you can think so much, just like, "Why God? Why?" You know, I, I was. And even in Psalms, you get a little bit of that. Like, how long must I suffer? And like all this other stuff, these questions and, you know, God answering, like how we, how we learn here. It's like, God always has a plan, even when you don't see it. And it was kind of like one of those things. It's Mm -hmm. like, you may have like all these questions and you don't see what's going on behind the the scenes that God has. And he's like, no, no, I've, I've got this. Don't, don't worry about anything that you're asking me right now it's okay it'll, it'll be yeah. fine it'll work you know all that stuff so that's how it's hit me 
Mm. I feel like the progression of that, because like Habakkuk is very um, just, I guess, a depressing book. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's about like just living in darkness kind of yeah. and um and i mean you know like there is hope in the chaos kind of thing but then it, it is interesting that you bring up like ecclesiastes because you have that like everything's meaningless but god is you know god is there and then i think about like job which is my favorite book um yeah. speaking where, of depressing <laughs> right yeah, I, I hate job yeah well it's it, it is depressing but he always has faith and yeah, so it's like so even when people come around him and say curse god and die and those kind of things he's like no i'm not going to do that and so there's kind of that progression there of like those are like the three i feel like places you can be in your faith you can either be mm. just why like why is this happening um why like this my life is terrible but i know god is there and god's gonna take care of it you know um and so i feel like i feel like reading habakkuk is great because you have all this like because i I mean everyone's felt that at some point in their in their spiritual life you know just like why why am i even here why am i doing this why am i wasting my time you know um but there's that hope there that you know that we kind of so i i think habakkuk is great in the sense that it kind of can um i don't know like show us what we're feeling and and you know then we can then realize okay well let's look at it from a different lens or or a different way kind of thing Um, i feel like i'm in this like weird maybe not weird this like stage in my life where i'm like i feel rushed to hit these like milestones that I'm supposed to have already hit by now kind of Mm -hmm. thing, or at least society tells me I'm supposed to have hit by now. The ability to lift your arms. The ability to lift (laughs) my arms. No, that's not one of them. I can do that now. But- um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, you've hit that milestone. Congratulations. Uh, So I feel like this is kind of like teaching me patience which is really hard. They always, like I've always heard never to pray for patience because then God will. Yeah. He'll definitely provide that um, situation for you. Um, mm. <laughs> excuse me. Um, it's not the Rona. Um, <laughs> you, have to, you have to say it. <laughs> you have to say it. Because uh, <laughs> if you don't, then it is the Rona. We need a shirt. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. That's need, how that works. Shirt right there. <laughs> yeah, it's not the Rona. No, 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 not the Rona. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> My goodness. Um, so when, We're not talking about when anything this series serious, started, so. Um, I was like, okay, fine, I get it. Like, <laughs> like uh, I'm still like struggling for sure with patience and with wanting to be somewhere that I'm not and not really seeing the direction or if it's ever going to happen. But um, the series isn't over yet, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like it back. It's my favorite book in the Bible. Um, I like, you know, as you were saying, Adam, the, these kind of, stages that you see uh, throughout scripture I feel like Habakkuk hits all of those stages um, you know it's it's a prophecy it falls in the minor prophets but it's it really is a lament where Habakkuk mm-hmm. is coming to God and he's just That's like pouring out his heart like this is horrible like what are you doing uh, but you see in uh, the end of chapter one beginning of chapter two wherever wherever it is uh, where Habakkuk tells God like you're of everlasting surely we're not gonna die like Habakkuk knew that the entire time mm-hmm. uh, but he's still crying out to God saying why are you letting all of this go on why are you sitting idly by and then when God said well I'm gonna bring in the Babylonians to destroy all you heathens uh, and they're not I mean it's not heathens it's God's people who the Habakkuk is um, lamenting about but then that's when Habakkuk's like, well, well, you're a faithful God. You're not going to kill us. You're not going to destroy us. You, you, like, we're your people. Uh, and then by the time you get to the end of the book or the, you know, the end of chapter three, you have Habakkuk like, well, no matter what happens, I'm still going to praise you. Like, I, I still have faith. I'm still going to worship you because you are God. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you just see this progression through uh, his thoughts or through this conversation that he's having with God that – that like you're saying, I think we all kind of get to this point in our lives. Um, and it's awesome to, to read Habakkuk and be like in three chapters, we get to see this entire right. thing. Mm, where, yeah. Whereas in Job, like let's stretch this out over 50 <laughs> chapters or something, you know, however long True. Job is. Um, 
And, you know, the thing that I hate about Job, I always feel like it's just a bunch of whining schoolgirls. Like, that's really what I feel. And Habakkuk even hits that, like, right on the head. And he's like, I'm just going to go up on the watchtower and wait to see how God's going to respond to me. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just this whining schoolgirl. He doesn't like what mom told him. And he's like, I'm going to go in my room and wait for you to apologize. Uh, You know, (laughs) Habakkuk even hits that point. But, um, you know, what I I just love that it's so relatable. Uh, And in Staunton, uh, I've been challenging uh, the, the Staunton campus to read through Habakkuk, like read the entire prophecy every day. Uh, and be very familiar with it. Uh, but one of the things that I told them, like, I think all of us read James and we're like, James is so relatable. It's so yeah. practical. Mm-hmm. It's so a part of, of what we can do. I feel like Habakkuk's the old, ver- old Testament version of that. And it's not that. in the, the practicality of here's what you need to do. It's the here's what your heart and your attitude is. Uh, and you see this progression and, and we can relate to it. And maybe you're stuck in that that you know, first four verses point in your life where you're crying out to God saying, why is this happening? And you need to move through chapter two and into chapter three and saying, oh, even though this is happening, I'm still going to praise you. So yeah. I think it's definitely, uh, this is a good time to read that book, yeah, it's you know? Yeah. 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 Which is, I mean, that's why Tim picked it, um, yeah. obviously, but well, picked it slash the Holy Spirit. Picked right. It. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of that, <laughs> Like we're in this time of chaos, and so it's like, how can we, how can we go from why me to hope? Yeah, you know. Plus, things like that are very genuine. Like the books like that, I feel like it's very raw, it's very real. Yeah, it's you know, if if somebody's ever like, oh, and it's supposed to be all rainbows and whatever else, it's like, nah. Have you read <laughs> some in of these any books of that scripture? Are, yeah, yeah, any of those? Yeah. Yeah. Have you like, read First Peter? Yeah. <laughs> and Job to me is always like that scene out of uh, the Robin Hood movie where he's like, my dog killed by whatever. Yeah. My cat choked on the goldfish. Yeah. Oh, isn't it good to be home, Master yeah. Robin? Yeah. yeah. It's always just like... Just, yeah, I mean, it is a very, it's a very depressing book. Yeah. <laughs> I do agree. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah, and uh, so every year you get into that, read through the Bible in a year, and every time I get to Job, I'm like, oh, sorry. I don't want to finish this. Uh, so this year I did the chronological version. So mm-hmm. Job is like right at the beginning. like mm-hmm. And so in yeah. January, you're like, you're on fire. I'm going to get through this. And like Job at the beginning, I'm like, yes, I still have motivation to do this. <laughs> and I got through Job and I don't have to come back to it. It's great. Mm-hmm. All right. You got a close oh. shot. Oh, at say, least you hit the camera. close now this time. Stir him up here a little bit. Shake Stir the bowl. Yeah. yeah, just take the bowl. Oh, this is another Nate Brown. Oh my wow. gosh, Nate. Nate Somebody Brown. Somebody staged man. this. Yeah. What are ways we can seek God's justice every day and in a lifetime? Man, coming in with the philosophical questions. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna, like multiples, know like three in a row. Of, <laughs> yeah. Right. I should have put all the random questions in here too. <laughs> <laughs> what What was the question? No. Seeking God's no, seeking justice, God's justice. Every, on the daily and in lifetime. Okay, we'll we'll take a break from intelligence and try and hit the thing again. This is the this. I'm going catapult style this time. I'm nervous for you. Oh, oh. that was that was no. good distance. That was a good arc. Everything just a little to the left. Yep. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that was so unjust. It was such a weird way to do it too. So. A little bit, was, yeah. yeah. You're like rookie of the year. I'm like. trying to do it differently each way. I've done the curve. I've done the option pass. And now that was the <laughs> catapult <laughs> this time. Oh, no. We're all looking to like you yeah, have an answer. It's on, on the it's tip of your tongue. Yeah, like, where, yeah. How can we advocate okay. for justice in Macoupin County, uh, specifically in these uh, smaller communities that we live in? Okay. Well, first of all, Eric and I have the same issue because we're both teaching. So. Yeah. Um, my brain is grinding right now. Um, these kind of questions just jack me up. Like <laughs> Gabby asked me these questions all the time, like something like this. And I'm like, you can't just come at me with that. Right, like, right. Like, no, no, it's like, no. I gotta hold on. I gotta process that for a while. Um, well, okay. So first of all, first thing, when I think of justice, I think about the justice system, obviously. Um, and I think about the, you know, basically, um, 
you, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty kind of thing. Um, and so the, f- the first thing I would say is it, it starts with a conversation. It starts with, because, so if you, you know, if you get convicted of, well, is it convicted? If you get charged, convicted is different. If yeah. you get charged with something, you know, you're taken to court and you get to plead your case, right? right. Um, and what that comes with is you explaining what you did, why you did it, or if you didn't do it, you know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think I think a lot of, you know, we, we're talking about a lot of, you know, like with the Black Lives Matter stuff, you know, you have what they would chant is no justice, no peace. Um, and so if, if we don't allow justice then there really isn't peace you know because we're not we're not allowing people to defend themselves um and so i think i think it all comes down to a conversation it all comes down to learning why someone believes what they believe and and how they got there and an openness to actually hear that and, yes yeah, yeah. Just, so if fine. you know yeah, not just have like one side of a view i i think of like this this is my biggest example of this would be my roommate chad um that mm-hmm. you know i lived with for a couple of years mm-hmm. he is an atheist like he i mean he does not believe in god he's a scientist he believes that he won't probably believe in god until there's empirical evidence um and so we had tons of conversations about this but we we came at it from an understanding of that we're not going to attack each other we're going to listen to each other and so um you know it's it's really about that and i think there's not enough of that in our world today um it's a lot of you're wrong shut up instead Mm -hmm. of let me listen to you because we all came from different backgrounds. We all came from different places. Um, and, and so we have to understand each other, which is part of discipleship too. You know, if we, um, we just, we have to understand each other and where each other come from, um, because we all have different history. So, um, you know, if you grew, grew up in a predominantly white town, um, or something of that nature, you're going to look at the world a little different than if you grew up in the inner city where, you know, you had a lot more um, people of color that were around you, you know, um, but it, it all comes with that conversation. It all comes with understanding where people are coming from. Um, and like, I mean, you know, if like so the the biggest conversation, which I assume is what this is about, is the race issue. Um, you know, when we come at it, like there are people that are racist. I mean that 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 is the world we live in. There are, there are probably people of all colors that are racist. I would say, mm-hmm. um, but we have to understand why they're the way they are. Did they learn that? Was that taught to them? Um, because that's typically the case. Um, and so the world is changing. You know, if we go back two or three generations, like that was the norm. It, the norm was that you know blacks and whites weren't together. Um, But now we are coming to a place where we're like, okay, that's wrong. So let's fix it. Um, And so I think it, I think we just have to, we have to be more open to talking to each other and learning where each other's at, Um, which I think is part of the problem with our political climate, with our, um, you know, cultural climate. We just don't, we don't allow people to talk. We shut them up. Um, And I mean, that's both sides. Like, you know, it's. Um, we just we have to have more conversations and we have to understand each other more um, and not over the internet because that doesn't work yeah. you know um, text Amen. can Preach text brother. can be misconstrued um, but if I'm sitting with you face to face and we're having a hard conversation I can understand where you're coming from because I can ask questions yeah. um, and so like I, I think I think part of part of our problem in McCoupin County and everywhere else is we don't listen to each other and that's you know that's it's like you know there there are the people that are like black lives matter is stupid um why are they marching whatever there's the people that would say that blue lives matter is dumb um why why are they doing what they're doing but it's like nobody's talking like let's talk okay. let's have a conversation um, because that's where that's where things happen yeah um, nothing gets fixed otherwise yeah. mm-hmm. well even i mean look at like for example look at a war right mm-hmm. the civil war they had a war they the south surrendered and then they got together and they wrote a treaty so like that's but they talked they had a conversation they Mm -hmm. figured out what they wanted in that so the only way that there's ever going to be peace or not not surrender but peace or you know whatever is if we get together and we talk and say what do you want 
Yeah. You know, but what, in metaphorical surrender yeah, as far yeah, as, mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> we have to compromise. There, there's got to yeah. be some compromise or else no one's ever going to be happy. And if anything that 2020 has taught us, mm-hmm. it's compromise. how to compromise. Yeah. <laughs> oh my my I, think, I think that analogy uh, to war is a good analogy, especially <laughs> with uh, sitting down and, and coming up with a treaty and both sides talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you take that same example and you look at uh, the Korean War, um, they never did that uh and so technically there's this they're still at war uh they've just got their uh you know the ceasefires on the table we're not shooting at and attacking each other anymore mm-hmm. um but both sides are Until too stubborn right. to sit yeah. down and and talk like let's figure out how we can live peacefully uh, both of us on this peninsula um and you know we've got to get to that point yeah. uh I, I don't know what that looks like. Um, unfortunately, there there does seem to be a systemic issue from from the top, and it's not yeah. just you know if, if we sit at this table we we talk about it. We, we'll, there isn't really an issue here. We we're all in agreement on on what is right and what is wrong, but the system itself is is broken, mm-hmm. uh, and to fix the system. Uh, we have to voice that the, the system is broken. Uh, so people first have to admit that there is something wrong with the system. You know, it's kind of the, the first step of real is admitting you have a problem, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. But there are so many people out there who are just like, there's not a problem. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, I don't know if they just turn a blind eye to it or what it is, but the problem, the problem from that stems that when they say there's not a problem, they're immediately attacked as racist. Yeah. Uh, their thought of they're not a problem may not have anything to do with race. Uh, and then when they're attacked as being racist, then they're... Then they get defensive. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, so you know, like... It's both sides coming to the table. Because, I mean, you talk about ceasefire. <clears throat> like, a ceasefire is only good until someone sh- fires a shot. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it, as soon as North Korea or South Korea or whoever fires a shot, it's over. Yeah. Like, we're back to war again. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no treaty. There's no peace. It's just, you know... We're, we're going to not point our guns right now, but if you point our, your guns, we're going to shoot back, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we, we just need to get better about communicating with people because that we just shut down the communication. You know, it's like, I don't want to hear you because you don't believe what I believe. It's like, no, like we, we as Christians should be completely okay with somebody disagreeing with us. But if they're not okay with having that conversation, that's where the problem comes mm-hmm. because I want, you know, um, like and I mean if you're having so if you're having a conversation with someone about um, you know Christianity or whatever and you say something and, and they're like I don't want to talk about it that's okay like it's it's okay to not talk about it but hopefully at some point they'll get comfortable enough to where you can have that conversation yeah. um, like why did you leave the church or why did you whatever if they're not comfortable you don't want to push but eventually as you grow in a relationship which is why relationships are so important which is also a life group plug uh, <laughs> yeah. but you know like it, you know we we'll we just back. we need more conversation that that is really i think the that is what's going to fix our world today is talking to each other and not yelling at each other in person or stabbing each other in the back and back to having patience as yeah. well huh. with each other <laughs> hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see what other question we get from Nate Brown here. Stop. <laughs> I don't like you guys. <laughs> Make sure it's not a Nate question. <laughs> I mean, he's got some, he had some other ones yeah. too that were. Ha! It's uh, not a Nate question. Good. All Perfect. right. Here we go. I like this question. What are you most looking forward to in the next 10 years? And that's just a random one from yeah. nobody. Okay. That's a rando. Yeah, yeah. nobody. Right. That's one of the other from ones. From me. <laughs> from you. <laughs> Then you should have an answer already. <laughs> Next <laughs> ten years. Next ten. Wow. Uh, sleeping through an entire night without a child in my bed. <laughs> That'd be nice. I know Holden's pretty young, man. Still, he's yeah. still, still might have ways to go. I know. Yeah. I, know. I've, oh. I have a ten-year-old as well. <laughs> yeah. That was close. That was. That was like exactly the same as the last one, though. So your consistency in your grouping is good. <laughs> Man, it's hard. Maybe to... you're left-handed. Are you left-handed? I don't know. Try that. Yeah. Sometimes. Ooh, that might be better. It's hard to think about like what ten years will look like. It kind of goes back to the Hab- Habakkuk. Mm-hmm. Did I say it right? You did. Good job. Yes. Um, my and of hab- course, we're all assuming that's how it's said because there right. is nothing known about Habakkuk outside the prophecy of Habakkuk. 
Mm-hmm. And I just Googled it. Like, how do you say this? And mm-hmm. it read it to me. And I'm like, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of goes back to my Hab- Habakkuk answer. Can we, wait, can we talk about, just real quick, the side with how when Tim says Habakkuk, it's like he's attacking it. <laughs> Habakkuk. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like he just like, I'm going to punch you with this word. It's like starting a mower. Habakkuk. <laughs> 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 if you had been a second later on that, <laughs> you'd spit, I'd have spit all over. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh man! Oh gosh! Uh, how does it go back to Habakkuk? Okay, so earlier when I it had answered the Habak- Habakkuk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I can't. Wait to way to go, Eric. No, it's Habakkuk. there forever. In my brain. <laughs> yes, welcome to my brain, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I had said that, like I was <clears throat> kind of asking why I haven't reached these milestones yet, and oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. connecting dots. Um, so I mean, I hope in the next ten years the things that I want happen, but. I don't know. I kind of got to get to a point where, and I was going to ask this earlier, but like when, if you don't get what you ask for from God, like if it's not part of the plan, are you allowed to mourn the fact that you don't get the life that you asked for? Mm -hmm. And if so, I, don't, I know that's like a hard question, yeah. but like that's what's been on my mind the whole time that we've been talking. Yeah. I mean, from a human perspective, we want what we want, you know. Um, I think it's okay to mourn. It's okay to mourn anything, really. The pro- I think the problem comes when you when you dwell on it, and that becomes like, you know, if you, if you mourn that you're not getting what you want for the next 50 years, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, your focus is on it, and it creates a yeah. rift between... Because I think it, because yeah. I think there's two, I think there's two things that usually is, I feel like what happens either God has called you to something and you haven't done that, or you haven't come to peace with the fact that you might not get what you want, you know? Um, cause I think it, and that's, that is the hardest thing is saying, if it doesn't happen, I'm okay. You know, that's, that's where, that's where it's so hard. Um, but I think that's where we all need to get to as as believers is a place where we're okay with not getting what we want, which is literally the hardest thing it's as a, a human. Big yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but I mean, even you know, when you think about like a lot of times, like you'll hear stories about. Um, well, this happened to like Josh and Tish. Um, you know, they were like trying to have a child and they weren't getting pregnant and then they ended up adopting like they felt like they should and then they got pregnant you know so it's like some sometimes oh, it's that step and Teresa has heard that story a million times yeah. as soon as somebody yep. adopts yeah. they will get pregnant but yep. so it's it's yeah. like sometimes there's a step that you need to take that God's been calling you to that you're just like I don't want to do it I'm scared or whatever yeah. um, or it's the you know just just be at peace with where you're at right now mm-hmm. like I'll I'll get you there but you need to be okay. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think mourning, um, I, I think I think it is okay, uh, but I, I probably think it's okay because of my own experiences with it. Um, you know, I shared uh, a few weeks ago when I was preaching here about this failed adoption that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these, these kids that we were going to adopt, uh, as we were working through that process, like they became a part of our family. Uh, you know, they never came home and they never lived with us, but, you know, we knew everything we could know about them. We knew, um, you know, who they were and what they were like and everything like that. And they became a part of our family. When that adoption kind of fell apart, um, it was like losing our kids. Yeah. Um, and and we mourned that um, for a long time. And, and I still, to this day, when I, when I think about, you know, what that would have been um, and where those kids are at now, like, uh, I, I know where they're at. I, I know what family they're in. I know where they live. Uh, I know they have a great life. But, man, it still hurts. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's still painful, and I still mourn what I thought my life was going to look like. Um, 
I don't dwell on it like like you're saying. I don't <clears throat> I don't sit there and be like, you know, that should have been me. But it still hurts yeah. uh, because you know I wanted that, um, and and God didn't want that for me, and that's okay because His ways are better than my ways, and His plans are better than my plans. But you know, I have to remind myself of that um, when I start to get into that that morning of of reminding myself that you know it's it may be what i wanted but i want what god wants more than than what i want so yeah i think it's that whole idea of like we were talking about on the last episode you know where it was like if you could switch lives with someone and you and eric both said you wouldn't um even though your life may not look like what you wanted you enjoy the life you have you know so if you would have adopted them, you wouldn't have Henry. You might not have Holden. And so your life would look different. Um, and so it's hard to think about that. You know, like, yeah. that's what I wanted, but that's not what God provided for me or, or where I'm at. And so, yeah, it's it's the piece of being okay with where you're at and, and understanding that your life is so much better now than it was than it would have been, you know, if that had happened or whatever. Yeah, and it's it's not looking at that and saying, well, I think my life would have been better if it had gone according to my plan. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I think, you know, where where you're at in your life, it's easy to look at everybody else and say, oh, man, their life is awesome. And I think my life would be awesome if I just have or had what they have. Yeah. Um, but that's that's not necessarily true. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that might not be right. Um and God knows what he's doing. And, and like you said, we see it in Habakkuk. You know, Habakkuk is lamenting and crying to God, but he comes to God for it. He doesn't go to his friends like Job's friends do. Um, mm-hmm. He comes to God and laments and cries out to God, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and God gives him the answers. He doesn't like the answers. I mean, if I mean, we saw it this weekend as we got into ch- the rest of chapter one and chapter two. You know, he doesn't like the answers that God gives him, but God gives him the answers. Um, and, and he's okay with that by, by the time we get to chapter three. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think all my 10-year stuff revolves around, like, my kids and just um, making sure that they go out in the world as they're getting older um, as, you know, hopefully they know God's love and they're, they, ha- they have a strength about them. Like, they have the the armor of God on them Mm -hmm. and, and, and all that and, and everything that they do. And, um, just with like the good values and good family Mm -hmm. values and and things of that nature. Um, cause one, like Weston will be 20. So he'd be like college age, you know, or wait, no, he'd be 22, 22. Yes. So he'd be graduating. So I'm thinking Checklo would be, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's crazy to think about that, but I'm just like, that's, that's what this next 10 years for me <clears throat> yeah. looks like is there's my focus is just you know prep and they get a great foundation mm-hmm. thus far and everything is just ex- you know yeah. keeping that going keeping that going yeah that that becomes a hard thing to think about you know 10 years mm-hmm. it, it's a long time sounds like a long time you say oh man you know my my 12 year old to be 22 but that's 10 years i've got a 15 year old mm-hmm. and three years he's moving out of the house mm-hmm. Like that's not a lot of time left with him. Um, yeah. You know that's that's hard for me. Uh, but at the same, like he he has a plan. He knows what he wants. I'm excited to to see him move forward with that plan, and even knowing that that he's going to move out. And I'm not one of those parents who are like, "You're out when you're 18." Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've told all of my kids like, "I want you to stay at home until you're married and moving out and starting your own family." Yeah. Um, you know, community college is is the best choice for for all of you. And I, and we've even told our kids, if you go to community college, I'll pay for it. Mm-hmm. You know, go to community college, stay at home. We love our kids; they're awesome. Uh, even when they're in, in <laughs> will you adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, I'm not trying to push him out the door. But I also yeah. like, you know, Hayden. Hayden's got a plan. He knows what he mm-hmm. wants to do, and it involves him leaving home at 18. Yeah. Um, because he's military, going to the he military. wants to go to the Air Force Academy, uh, which yeah. is in Colorado Springs, uh, you know, and and we're blessed to have my mom live right up the road from there. She's about an hour and a half away from the academy, uh, but you know, the Air Force Academy requires a lot out of him, and I don't know, I, you know, I don't know if God has that in store for him, but I want to, I want to see it happen. Yeah, uh, and 
and I know, you know, we've already talked to him, you know, you have to have a congressional appointment to go to the Air Force Academy, any military college. Uh, and each congressman only gets two, two appointees. Uh, and just because you get an appointment doesn't mean you get into the school. Uh, so, you know, we've already had hard conversations with him. Like, you may want to go there and you may do everything you need to do but to go there, not, but yeah. you may not end up there. Yeah. Um you know, and he he's at a point in his life where he is okay with that, but he's working towards it. Uh, and you know, a couple of months, maybe not months back, a few weeks back, I had the conversation with him like, "Hey, you've got to be able to run to be in the Air Force Academy." And so he was like, "Well, I want to go on a run with you." So one night, at, you know, eight thirty at night or something, he was playing video games. Says, "All right, let's go on a run." Yeah, okay, how long are we going? I said, "We're running a five k tonight." Kid hadn't run in a, <laughs> over a year. Well. Over it, it had been over a year since I had seen him run, and he goes, changes, go out, and ran a five k. Didn't walk that at all. We just went out and he ran a five k. Come back. He actually beat me. Like we turned the street to get on the house, and he's like, "I'll race you home." And I'm like, "Okay." And he took off sprinting, and I just kept the same pace. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not sprinting. You know that. In two days when he woke up, he ate five whole pizzas. <laughs> no, the next day he was complaining about his legs hurting and stuff. Oh, I yeah. said, we're going running again tonight. Yeah. Your legs will hurt less. Yeah. 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 So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, that's that's a lot of time, you know, because I feel like even five years, you kind of have an idea, but 10 years is like, wow, like, where will I be in 10 years? You know, what what will I be, how will I be thinking, how, where, what will I be doing yeah. You know, because I can even backtrack ten years and do that comparison yeah. to that now. And it's just like, wow, okay, yeah, that was interesting yeah. ride. This well, I mean, you know, for me, Rosalind would be twelve. Like Rosalind would be Weston's age. Like that's crazy to think about that. Like she would be sitting in my office on her Chromebook, you know, like yeah. <laughs> like right. watching YouTube or playing, you know, like that. That's oh, it's that's so weird, weird yeah. to think about that. Obviously, in ten years, she would have a grizzle pad, not a Chromebook. A grizzle pad, yeah, yeah. from Parks and Rec. Parks and oh, Rec. well, Gosh, think about, think about how long I've known like Annie. Yeah, that's like yeah. that's crazy. I've known her when she was my yeah. kid's age. That's mm -hmm. weird. Yeah, because I've been here that long. Annie, <laughs> Annie's an adult. She was never a child. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's not how this works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel that way about Alex Reed. And like, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. All he's, those, been, all those guys. he's been my little lackey since he was like 11 <laughs> or 12. <laughs> so. In Man. the like best way possible, Alex. Yes. So no, he knows, he knows how I feel about him. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird and creepy. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say other Alex. There you go. We need to. Yeah. Uh, boy right. Alex. I refer to them as boy Alex and girl Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just how I do it in my house. Who are we, who are we up to here? Adam. Adam. Adam, Adam here? Okay. Let's see if we got any more. I think those were all Nate's heavy questions, I think. I hope so. Is, this I is think. another Nate question. <laughs> it, uh, okay, this one's not as heavy. Uh Choose an actor to play each cross church oh, staff member in a movie. Each person cannot choose their own. Please include me, Nate. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, it, for those of you that don't know, Nate was our campus pastor for many years. Um, in Staunton. And he, yeah, in Staunton. And he just um, He's going to left. Pennsylvania now. Yeah. Yep. Going to Pennsylvania now. Um, but so, yes, we will include you, Nate, because that'll be <laughs> funny. Staff movie people right yes yeah. mm -hmm. Which, actors, actors actors to and play actresses staff in a movie yeah. no, just actors it. so so like are we yes. talking i would say this is this would be like maybe like the office style but yeah. in a church yeah yes. oh, i want to be pam yes. <laughs> okay we're not gonna just, you want to be jenna fisher yeah. or like are we picking real like their Fun act fact, yeah. jenna fisher and i went to the same college Wow. Well, then you have to be her. So I'm, I'm already her. <laughs> okay, so let's start with By Nate. Let's start with Nate, just because he asked this question. It's great. Oh. oh. All right, Nate. Who do we think plays Nate in the Office version of Crossroads? Mm. Ooh, what about? Dang it, I forgot what his about? name. <laughs> What's he on? He was the main dude in The Hangover. The main dude in The Hangover. Are you talking about like Seth Rogen? No. No. The main, like the good looking dude. Which the, guy the, guy the good the looking hair. guy. The, the like that's the first thing I thought of was like, who's a guy yeah, with hair? hair man. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's also. Like um, the lead singer of uh, Need to Breathe. What's his name? 
Bo. What is his name? Are you talking about Bradley yeah. Cooper? Yes, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. No, Bradley Cooper would be a Nate Brown. Mm, I disagree. Why do you? <laughs> okay, I don't get a say. Thanks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> see, these are the kind of questions that I can't like. I'm like, I have to locks up. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. locks me up. I mean, I I don't know if that's bad. Um, I mean, because he was he is musical mm-hmm. as well because he was in. Oh right, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Sure, that's. I think that's okay. I think hmm. he could play him. <laughs> we'll let it. We'll let it. I guess. I mean, because we're talking about actors, like they're acting a part, not. Right. It's not their personality. They would yeah. act. Yeah. He would act like Nate Brown. Nice hair, short beard. Yeah, right. that was my reasoning. Maybe he likes okay. coffee. Maybe right. like his coffee. At least he can so pretend then, to like coffee. Uh, Cameron, since he's not here, who do we think for Cameron? Uh, well, Chris Pratt was brought up on personality alone, so yes, mm. he doesn't yeah. look like him, but they yeah. they would mirror each other very well. I was thinking like <laughs> I said, Cheech. What? <laughs> uh, long, long hair, beard. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, or um. I'm terrible at remembering names of people. I don't know anybody, so. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on. I have to, because once I yeah, figure it out. Yeah, we all got like IMDb up. Uh, I left my phone in my office. Dan- so. Danny Masterson from That 70s Show. <clears throat> I like that. Was, yeah. I like that. Yeah. That'd be all right. Hold on. Once I say this, you guys with Danny might Trejo. with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to edit some of this part. Jared yeah. Leto. So this is going to be a fun yeah, episode. You see everyone looking yeah, down right. at their phones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What a, Jared, Leto. Jared Leto. Yeah, I thought about Jared Leto. Do okay, you know we've Jared got a couple Leto selections is? for Cam. Yeah. So I want to show you who Jared Leto is so that you Okay, show me who Jared Leto is. Stacy. <laughs> oh, you're going with Stacy? Yeah. That's Jared Leto. Okay. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy. Stacy. Someone shorter. Hmm. I had said Amy Poehler, but I, I just threw that one out there from yeah, Parks yeah, and Rec. I mean, Amy Poehler or uh, Tina Fey, like somebody like that, I feel like. Yeah. Tina Fey. Yeah. I could see Tina Fey yeah. more than yeah. Amy Poehler. Yeah. Okay. What about Katina? <laughs> Amy Poehler. <laughs> Amy Poehler fits all the... <laughs> they have to... Well, with Stacey and Katina, they have to be like, you know, friends. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could go that. Mm. Or like... Sandra Bullock for Katina. Yeah, maybe. No. Yeah. Sure. I'm pretty good. Okay. Who else? Ashley. Uh, let's see. Say it. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Ooh, Say it. Reese Witherspoon. I can I see prefer, her pulling off an Ashley. I prefer Reese without her spoon. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't with you anymore. Oh, Veto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, like Reese with a spoon or Oh, uh What's her name? The one that's typically with uh like Adam Sandler. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Oh, Scarlett yeah. Johansson. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just flipping through the Yeah. Jennifer Aniston. Okay. <laughs> what about Eric? Eric. Oh my gosh! I just found Joseph really Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> For who? For Cameron. Oh, who? Josh Gad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. I was gonna say that earlier. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, last voice. Um, you said Eric. I said <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or uh, the dude that plays Negan. <laughs> yeah, the dude that plays Negan. <laughs> I Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey there Dean we go. Morgan. Yeah. Why do all these people have three names? <laughs> I have no idea who we're talking about at all. So, <laughs> sorry. You can just like edit me out of this part of the conversation. <laughs> you welcome, don't have- welcome to movies <laughs> without John. We are very much into movies. So. Um, hmm. Okay. Alex. This Alex. No, nope, I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, Can I say for myself? Who do you you're think not, you are? You're not supposed to, but. That's a song. Uh, That's a lot of things. I, I know who you guys are going to say that I am. So we I'm all just, just kind looked of at waiting the door, for it. So. I have who? No, I have no idea. We might agree with you. Who? Melissa McCarthy. Yep. 
<laughs> you totally have the same personality. Yeah, no yeah. waiting for it. <laughs> is that what you were thinking too? Yep. Yeah, I can see it. She's hilarious. She is hilarious. Yeah. Like, think of how dynamic this uh, office version of Cross Church <laughs> it would be real good. with the staff. That, <laughs> Way like, better than what <laughs> it currently is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so Adam had kind of brought up his own, and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Zach Galifianakis. Uh-huh. I, could, I could see that. Well, there, there's That's literally there's say. literally two. There's Zach Galifianakis and Seth Rogen. Those are like the two. Like I like Seth Rogen better for but, him, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach Galifianakis, I think, is the one that. Oh, Cat Dennings. Oh yeah. Ooh mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like her that'd a lot. Good, yeah. That'd be good. Who is that? Um, she was <laughs> a on girl. like Thor and Thor Dark World, yeah. and she's been two on broke a couple, girls. Two yeah, broke girls. Yeah, two that's what I was trying. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she's the girl from uh, Nick and Nora's oh, Infinite Playlist. Man, yeah. Katina, Courtney Cox. <gasps> oh yeah, yes, yeah, Courtney Cox. Fit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know that one. I Friends, know Courtney. Right? Cox. <laughs> yeah, dude, I feel like I feel like the one that's really spot on is Josh Gad for Cameron. Like oh, that's man. like just put That'll be good. put long yeah. hair and a beard on Josh Gad and yeah. like it's Cameron. So what we late? we got John. Uh, we got now. John. Yeah. John yeah. Tim. and Tamika. So Tamika? Tim. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tamika too. Yep. Uh, Tamika would be Rashida Jones. Uh, Mila Kunis, I think. Yeah. Or Rashida Rashida, Rashida Jones. Jones. Yeah. 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 It's a little easier one. Yeah. Yeah. For John, I had Brad Pitt. Mm. <laughs> See, I was thinking because um, I just watched Fury. Oh, and yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, he's got the sort of. Yep. Brad we can Pitt also or, have uh, um, Shia LaBeouf for Cameron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, why? I just can't you think guys of names. Love I like to think I'm a Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay being Bra- Brad Pitt. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sustain then, huh? Sustain. Or Leo. Leo. DiCaprio. Yeah. Oh, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. He's one of my favorite actors. Oh, really? Or Tom Cruise. Yeah. Mm. Uh, just, we'll stay away from Yeah, Tom let's Cruise. stay with Leo, yeah. actually. Okay. So I'm going to hopscotch over to Dan. Oh, yeah, Dan. Jeff Goldblum. Oh! oh <laughs> what? That's a good one. Brilliant! Just going to yeah. drink my, my drink. Or uh, John pointed out John Malkovich. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But Goldblum, man. I mean... I feel like that's that's pretty spot on. <laughs> just weird <laughs> we oh love you Dan gosh. even though you are weird we're all weird <laughs> uh, okay so who's left Tim I think we're up to Tim Steve Martin so this this Steve is funny Martin. because <laughs> this is one of the first things okay when I first came here many many years ago um, and seeing Tim preach for the first time like on the stage I had said to Teresa I was like this is kind of neat it's kind of like having Will Sasso up there mm. preaching and he because just how animated he was and I don't how know who that yeah. is. Um, he was from he's done like loads of comedies. I mean, I feel like it has to be a bald person. So there's people Bruce, Bruce Willis, head. Bruce Willis. Like we didn't choose somebody with long hair for yeah, Cameron, right. So. That's true. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know Bruce Willis, him. but he's not. I can't. Funny. No. Okay. I want. I really Ladies wanted. Who's wanted in like, <laughs> who's in comedy that it would be like a good fit for Tim? It's Will Sasso. He's a comedian. <laughs> I wanted he's one of us Happy to be Nicholas Cage. He was in the Three yeah. Stooges. Mm-hmm. The... Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I love Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yeah. He'll just be an extra. You could be Nicholas Cage. I don't want to be like Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be really fun if he played me. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> man, I don't know. This is the hardest sure. one. All right, Will Sasso. Will Sasso. Are we done with that one then? Yeah, let's go to the next one. So. Okay. <laughs> Are we done with Sorry, that one? Because I want to get out of this uncomfortable <laughs> Man, movie situation. A, yeah, no idea long, what I'm talking about. Nate, you had some long questions today. Yeah. Long answers. We don't have to ask a fourth it's one, do we? Yeah, we do let's it? do one more because that's what we do. We're doing that's two pieces. What piece. we do here? If I pull out that one question that I said I didn't want to answer. How oh, nice. It's smaller. It might be. All right, Dan, charcoal or gas grill? Oh, there's an easy one. Right? Oh, man. Charcoal. Honestly, I like both. <laughs> I am great on the convenience of a gas grill. Like, I can walk outside, turn on my grill, yes. and be grilling in, like, five, ten minutes. That's yeah. why I, love, I like the flavor of charcoal, yeah. but I love the convenience of gas. Yeah, I think so that's, you have to have both, I think. Yeah. Like, 
you have to have both. So, but Gretchen just got me uh, for our anniversary, like one of the the egg grills, mm-hmm. um, and you can smoke on it and everything. But it uses lump charcoal mm. or wood block, uh, and so I use a mixture of them, and I've really been enjoying that. It's like learning how to grill all over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's been enjoyable. So yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's. I mean, the problem is with charcoal, it's like. 30 minutes later you can cook yeah you know like yeah. Oh, yeah. it's not like i'm gonna go whip up some burgers real fast you're like i gotta prepare because i gotta grill yeah you know? yeah. yeah but and it's kind of challenging the hot spots and whatnot yeah. too yeah. to come from that too it's a little more challenging to cook on that yeah. Yeah. yeah that that egg grill helps out on that if you they have like a stone that you can put in there to deflect heat mm-hmm. um and so you kind of build your your coals in the center and then you put the stone on and it will deflect the heat mm. uh, and it nice. cooks really evenly but it it takes a long like as a dad it works out really well for me it's like i'm gonna start the grill at five and then i'm like i'm busy for the next like two hours right so like, so i'm gonna go outside and have my alone time i'm gonna i'm gonna go stand by the grill and smoke a cigar and work in the garage <laughs> while i wait for the coals uh, to get hot that is true that is true Maybe that's why so many men prefer charcoal because yeah. they get to yeah. so stand outside and grill. Yeah. yeah. What are you feeling? I prefer, like Adam, I prefer the taste of charcoal. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I do appreciate the convenience of gas. We just bought my dad a new gas grill for Father's Day. Oh, oh snap. It's really cool. Yeah. See, Gretchen got me that new grill and I threw my gas grill away. I'm like, you just get rid of it. So I have like a gas smoker, mm-hmm. and then I have the egg, and that's what I've got now. So you put it out the street with a sign that said free, and it was gone in like two seconds? I did put it on the street. I didn't put a sign on it, but I put uh, it on the street, and then it was gone. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's metal, so people just drive around. Things disappear in Carlinville. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So last question, right? This one will be? I thought, oh, yeah. Because Alex Cause I first. started. Yeah. Yep. started yep. Oh, oh wow, man. that was. Has anyone hit it yet? No, I mean we've hit the camera, but not the lens. Right. Not the lens. You gotta hit the, you gotta hit the glass. Oh, is this Nate Brown? Nope, this is a random. Uh, would you rather live permanently in a roller coaster park or in a zoo? A roller coaster park. Zoo smell. That's exactly my reasoning. That's true. So, like, I like to go to the zoo, mm-hmm. but I would per- you want to live there? No, yeah. no, no chance. Yeah, you don't think the roller coaster park smells though, too? Like, but it's I mean, good food, sure. like urine like, and vomit. Like, yeah, and then there's, <laughs> there's the <laughs> yeah. grease. But I feel like there's urine and vomit, and but and poop. After okay, the so zoo. every so roller coaster extra. park has right. the turkey legs. So you just live near where they cook the turkey legs. That's gonna. Okay, but if you're living there permanently, you're not living there permanently no you have like a house there probably or like at Says least who? a place of indwellment is that a word you're in you're a troubadour you have a and cardboard box <laughs> yeah you're a and troubadour no yes the, the question does not specify therefore i make my own rules well you've got so. to build your own house so what are you building it out of in the zoo Materials Cages. that I order you're, from Amazon. Well, you're moving into the bear habitat. <laughs> the bear just died, yes. so I have a bear skin Let's go rug. order things <laughs> from. Oh, let's gosh. go order things from Amazon Construction. Yes. Does yes. Amazon even how long sell does it wood? take? How long does it take for Amazon to deliver a two by four? Don't you think they would? They would sell like hopefully um, two days. <laughs> sheds though, like you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like shed kits don't usually come with like the studs and stuff. It comes with like all the brackets, and then you still have to go to the the lumber store. And buy the lumber. This is my life. You don't get to live in it. <laughs> really? Enjoy living in the zoo while I ride roller coasters. <laughs> no, I think the roller coaster place. Okay. Uh, yeah. They do sell wood. Ha. Oh my goodness. I win. It's from it's like sad. different companies and stuff, but they you can buy wood on Amazon. What's a two by four cost? Two uh, by four by eight foot. Okay, well, that's I a watch. Find that. You're looking at watches. This one, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's because I just went back. <laughs> it's well, it's it, okay. This is a custom cut two by four to only four Ooh. feet, and it's fifteen dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> no most expensive house in the whole uh, world. Hey, what <laughs> yes, but you could say I purchased my house on Amazon. Yeah, you could. <laughs> what happened to that uh, like little hut that we had in the gorilla enclosure? And why is there a trail of blood here's going a, this way? Here, here's a Duramax flat roof insulated building that is 13 foot by 10 foot for $3,700. See? Oh, that's not bad. That's not a bad price. What does it come with, though? From now on. Um, I assume... Is it furnished? The things, <laughs> oh, you can also buy an all-wood Eagle Point 1,108 square foot cabin kit for 50000 Heck yeah. 50 grand. There we go. Mm. For an eleven. You can also buy a 170 foot... Uh, Square foot tiny house for twenty three dollars. 
23 dollars <laughs> no that's the plans to build it yeah <laughs> <laughs> build your own yeah alex is gonna buy that and get it in the mail and be like what the heck where's the house what, <laughs> what if it's, like, it's just like a little <laughs> it's a puzzle a tiny it's house like puzzle. A <laughs> uh, all right we went way too long but you know Yay. that's what we do uh because nate asked too many serious <laughs> questions <laughs> Nate, this is your fault if you're listening. He's not listening. <laughs> you better watch every <laughs> yeah. second of this. Call, call also, back to that also Alex had to go pee, so we had to stop. Hey. So. Yeah, that's why. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you guys for uh, listening or watching. Um, these are available on YouTube and also Apple Podcasts. So we have that available now. Um, and we want you to ask some questions in any any way possible you can email or facebook or youtube or text us um send a bird a vulture if you do send a a vulture vulture. uh with questions please take pictures (laughs) (laughs) of the question beforehand because it's not getting to us but not when you're trying to (laughs) capture the vulture because that's not going to be pretty (laughs) vulture selfies (laughs) all right (laughs) (laughs) all right we'll see you guys later (laughs) oh right yeah (laughs) Peace out. (laughs) (laughs) Once again, my cup is empty. (laughs) Don't you know to pace yourself? No, I don't. It's one can of soda.